Today we're going to be talking about this guy right here. He's a really cool fish. He's a level 7 and he does a lot. The reason why the level 7 emphasis comes up so much and why it's so important is largely because of this one card right here, if I can find it. The new card that we're getting to talk about is Abyss Rhine, the Atlantean Spirit. What this card does is you contribute any mermaid or Atlantean to take a level 7 Aqua Sea Serpent Fish, such as Super H Deep Sea King Zelicant, and either add it to your hand or special summon it. You know, a lot of cases, what people are going to be doing is going to be searching Teus to add this to your hand. But if you are going to be teching this card in, which I highly recommend to uh, take a look at him just because of the ability he adds to the deck to just swarm under certain hand traps. Largely what you're going to be doing is using her effect to summon this guy out to your field, bypasses Drill and Lockbird, and plays under it. And overall, it's a really strong card that kind of uses more of your main deck instead of your extra deck, which kind of frees up some more spots for other cards. So not only has this guy been kind of hard to get onto the field, nowadays though, we have so many cards that can get to him. Now, entirely from the mermail side of things, we've got these three. You play three copies of these, three her, three him, three him, and she directly gets you to this guy. He gets you to her, which gets you to him, and then he can either get you to him or get you to her. If you go for her, you don't lose your normal summon. You just gotta make sure you have enough discards in your hand and there's ways to kind of go about doing that. Along the Atlantean side of things, this gets you to Prince. Prince gets you to the Mermel cards, Atlantean cards that get you to him. It's kind of the same the same story over here. I'm not gonna get too far into it. I don't wanna bore y'all to death. So to make this simple, we're just gonna start off with a pike. We're gonna start off with two bricks because this combo works with bricks really well. How this is going to work is you're gonna normal summon the pike, use pike's effect, discarding a water monster to the graveyard to go ahead and search for that level three mermail i was talking about before we're gonna search her add her to our hand and the cool thing about her is she tributes a mermail atlantean from your field or your hand so you can just tribute the pike using her effect to go ahead and summon out the super h and deep sea king sea lacanth and put her right there on the field and go ahead and discard a card any card really to summon up to like four level four or lower fish monsters from your deck in this case our targets are mermail abyss pike fish borg harpooner Fishborg Launcher, and you can either go for another copy of Fishborg Harpooner, or you can go for your third copy of Pike. In this particular build, you run three copies of Pike. You're gonna be running like three of those, maybe two copies of this, maybe one of this, maybe not even. It really depends what your play style is, really. So from here, what you can do is use one copy of your Pike plus one of your launchers to go into a package that we were really excited for, but didn't really see much of before. It, the World Chalice Justiciar to go ahead and synchro summon this card right here. And what she does is on summon is searches for a monster reborn. Just that's it. She just searches a monster reborn and she floats. That's just incredible for synchro summoning. Next, we can go ahead and use both of our level fours and we can exceed summon into our first copy of Bahamut Shark and use said Bahamut Shark detaching a material to go into your first toad. Next, what we can do here is use the Bahamut Shark plus the Ib, the World Chalice does to CR, and go into a Link Summon of Marincess Coral Anemone. Next, we can use Ib's effect because she was sent from the field to the graveyard to summon one World Child's monster from your, what does it say, deck or graveyard. So you can just discard this card and bring her back for free. It's really cool. And we're gonna use Coral Anemone's effect right here. Now, keep in mind, this isn't using any like Teus. It isn't using any diva or neptibus or any like atlantean cards this is primarily just using the fish mermail package it's really cool we're gonna summon harpooner because it has less than 1500 attack which is something that's hard to do in this deck because all of our level four cards have like 1600 or more which makes it really difficult to work with anemone but this guy's really cool also when he's sent to the graveyard for a synchro summon you can negate something your opponent controls um, it's really cool and non-targeting from here we can go ahead and synchro summon a level six because level four plus level two into this new card called White Aura Porpoise. And what this card does is on summon, you can special summon one level four or lower fish monster from your graveyard, in this case, Abyss Pike. And then you can special summon one monster with the same name from your graveyard, in this case, Mermel Abyss Pike. And so you can summon two level fours out super easily to then exceed summon using both of those to go into another copy of Bahamut Shark. But we're not gonna go ahead and use his effect just yet because there's a couple of things we do want to do. Now, because we still have that Fishborg launcher in the graveyard, you can use its effect here to special summon himself. And there's two cards you could go into. You could use Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coelacanth to go into a copy of Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. And just from this one card alone, you've got like a toad from this, a negate, a toad, and you can go into the Neptibus, the Royal Mermail. You can absolutely do that. Or if you're more afraid of monster effects, 
what you can instead do is go ahead and make a level seven synchro into white aura monoceros and then on summon you can target one fish monster in your graveyard and revive it such as pike or the harpooner additionally the other thing is well, there's a lot of avenues you can go into for this that there's a lot of variability variableness i don't fucking know english i'm still waking up holy cow what you can do is like link off both of these into a Neptibus, the Royal Mermail, and then you can Synchro Summon using these to go into a Monoceros, and then Monoceros can revive the Coelacanth. And the cool thing about cards printed before 2012 is they are soft ones per turns, meaning if you have more cards in your hand, you can very easily use his effect a second time to summon more fishes from your deck if you play more copies. It is kind of stupid good. And I haven't found a way to broke it yet. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. We are going to go back a little bit just because I don't want to go ahead and use those effects just yet. Instead, what we are going to do is actually use that Fishborg launcher right here and use it plus the Porpoise to go into that Monoceros. And we're going to go the Xyz route, use Monoceros' effect to revive the abyss pike from our graveyard and we can overlay the monoceros plus the ancient card going into a copy of mermal abyss gyos next we can use the bahamut shark here detaching a copy of pike to go ahead and summon our third copy of totally awesome right there and then on the bahamut shark if you want you can exceed summon for the exceeds armor fortress if you have room to go ahead and put a armored shark from your deck into your hand. You can also go for the trap card as well. You've got a lot of options here. It's mainly though, if you do revive like Super Ancient with World Legacy Succession, you have a water discard extra in your hand you can send. From here, we can use the Xyz Armor Fortress plus the Marincess Coral Anemone and go into a copy of Neptibus, the Royal Mermail and use our World Legacy Succession targeting any level four water in our grave. It could be another copy of Abyss Pike, really. Go ahead and summon it right there. Overlay both of these for a copy of Bahamut Shark and then use said Bahamut Shark sending a water monster to the graveyard for cost to summon a toad, triggering the Neptibus, the Royal Mermail, to either add a copy of Mermel Abyss Sting or you can add back from your graveyard that Mizuchi that we had discarded earlier. And this is the board we do end on. It's three toads, a Gaios plus Mizuchi. See if I can like straighten this a little bit, I think. And obviously you have a lot of wiggle room with zone placements. I'm just kind of waking up a little bit, so I do apologize if it's a little sloppy. You kind of get the same picture. You're protected from super polymerization. You got three toads and a Gaios. Blanket negates, stop level five or higher from attacking. It's pretty strong. You don't have to worry about like Castor Fenrir or Pankatrops in that sense. And of course, you do have the ability of Abyss Rhine in the graveyard to uh, discard this card, to draw a card, triggering his effect again to add another equip spell. And then you can use Armored Shark to attach itself to any of these monsters, giving it 500 attack during your opponent's turn. I don't know if you can use it during the standby phase or like, I mean, not the standby phase, but like the damage step. So if somebody else knows about that, can you please comment it? I'd love to hear it. Ain't this perfect? OK, 